I'd like to introduce arbitrary Ar arbitrary albatross uh, with Art Mannion and Lee Metcalf. Great, thank you for the intro. This is got a good signal. Okay, for recording. Uh, right, so um, yeah, we. Uh, Lee and I work at the CERT Coordination Center, which is part of Carnegie Mellon University, Software Engineering Institute, to get all of the organizational names in there. Um, I do uh, a lot of coordinated vulnerability disclosure. I've been doing it for a long, long time. Uh, Lee is my helpful, very helpful math PhD assistant who does the important work when I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, Lee is also one of the co-editors of this ACM Digital Threats uh, Journal, which is up here. Um, which I encourage everyone to uh, consider submitting to. It is how far from a first edition? Uh, hopefully Roughly? by the end of the year. Okay. Uh, I try to ride my bike in all kinds of weather. And um, you can't tell, there's no cross section here, but those are those triple layer brownies that have the chocolate chips and the other stuff in the bottom, which uh, Lee brings those in and I say, what would you like? What would you like? What new computer would you like today, or something like that? It works. Food bribery works with me super well. Um, so we're, we're going to basically talk about uh, the idea that you know vulnerabilities get names, right? Um, mostly, it's a researcher selection. There's some branding element to that, uh, and it crossed our minds. I forget how long ago. What if we just had a computer name them all? And what is that? What would that mean? Would that be useful? And this is basically these, this presentation is our experiment to date in um, chasing down that, that line of thinking. Uh, we really, really, really need vulnerability identification. We have to have a name on the abstract thing that we're trying to talk about. Um, this is important for like disclosure and doing all vol management. All this hinges off of knowing what you're talking about. Um, we already have ID, which is a good thing, except we have a lot of it. Here are just four different uh, sets of IDs that are, that are in use. Um, there's a nice talk here from, I think, a Black Hat or a DEF CON many years ago, a few years ago. Uh, about all the IDs and counting as well, and just if you want to read more about that, that's a great, uh, great talk I, I often point to. Um, so we have, you know, we have phone numbers, we have CV ID identifiers, and we have this, this idea about words and named vulnerabilities. Um, professionals who are in a field have jargon, They're usually okay with the numbers and the code words, and you know, nerds about vulnerabilities are okay with code, code words. The rest of the planet really doesn't know what you're talking about, and they shouldn't have to know what you're talking about. Um, on occasion. They might need to when it's something big and they have to take some kind of action. Um, fairly recently, the, uh, a couple of different um, congressional committees were interested in this problem, and the uh, Senate Commerce Committee had a hearing, which I was invited to testify at, and I felt very proud, and it was a bit of a challenge to do that. Um, CVE was not mentioned at all during that talk. No one talked about CVE dash whatever. They talked about the words meltdown inspector, so regular people need words. Um, and I was, very, I was very proud to go to this presentation, go, go testify, but I did note that next week um, they're talking about sharks. <laughs> and it may have been shark week, so I don't know maybe what this committee's up to half the time, but there's some very serious talks, and then there's, maybe, maybe that's serious, I don't want to say it's not serious, but um, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I actually looked at some of the speakers, and there were, it looked like an actually interesting thing, but the I just had to capture this because there's really yeah, there's something there, right? Sharks, right? Um, people remember words pretty well, and they'll remember cl clusters of words pretty well. And when you talk about sort of coordinates like latitude and latitude and longitude, and this may be an alphanumeric code for latitude and longitude that I'm not familiar with, uh, their recall and memory drop off basically quite quickly. Uh, and this graph, it comes from a 1957 paper talking about this sort of thing, but I more recently stole it from um, these people. So we name, we name other things. We name storms. Um, I'm going to claim that they are easier to measure than vulnerabilities because they're physical. You can measure wind speed and pressure and temperature and things. They're conceptually easier to measure, maybe not physically easier to measure. Measure physical properties, have an objective measure. It's a tropical storm, it gets a name. It's a hurricane, it gets a name. Maybe typhoons get names. Um, I believe NOAA in the U.S. does this. I don't know what happens internationally, um, but I noticed that the Weather Channel names things as well just for probably promotional purposes. Um, so, you know, you want authority and a central authority. They're talking about objective measurements. Um, this is something interesting we came across. 
this uh, company um, covers the globe in three meter squares with a three word uh, a three word phrase. And this, to the best of my ability, is where we're standing. Well, maybe not all of us because this room's bigger than that. This is we are in model head spine, or somewhere in this room is probably that that quadrant. Um, so you know, three meter squares. I don't I don't know the math. I'm not sure you have, this is actual a different kind of math, right? How much surface area of a globe is there? And and there's enough three word right. combinations to cover the entire thing, I guess. Yeah. We Just looked. I'm pretty sure the mi works. middle of the ocean is covered. I think so. You can really pick anywhere. Uh, right. You can get some, you know, numbers can be unique. If you have enough words, you can be unique about things. Recognition is not great for humans for numbers. Meaning not great for numbers unless it has a, it spells out leet or it's your old phone number or something. Um, computers like numbers and cataloging, but, uh, and, you know, have trouble, have to do NLP processing and things to, to deal with words. Um, names are one thing, branding is something else. So we get a lot of uh, researchers branding things. There's often marketing involved, logos, websites, press releases, uh, press language as opposed to advisory, sort of technical language. Anybody remember this one? Could, this is a, you, you get a cert sticker if you get any of these right. Uh, you already have a cert sticker, go ahead though. Misfortune cookie. Miss Fortune cookie, do you remember what it was about? I can't remember off the top of my head. It had to do with cookie. Very, very likely. Uh, anyone remember what that, that one was? It's actually the, the this animal is meaningful. Rampage, rampage, and I forget what the problem was. It's not Rohammer. It's something else. Anyway, uh, that one I totally did not notice at all. Anyone know this one? It, it's Venom, but again, without I have it somewhere in the notes, but I don't know what um, Venom was about. So great, we have you know we have names for things. You can kind of guess this is about a cookie. It may not have been a browser cookie. It may have been like an SMB cookie or something, or not. I'm not sure. Something about RAM, I have no idea what that one's about. So I got, a, I got a name, but I'm lacking the, right, the back connection to it. Um, so, you know, what if we name all the vulnerabilities? Uh, or what if we name just some of them, right? If we want to pick some, how do we decide which ones to, to notify, uh, to, to, sorry, to, um, to, to rise to the level of getting a name, right? I don't name a random thunderstorm, I name a tropical storm. Um, Severity is a nice idea. I have issues with CVSS, um, but maybe better would be uh, existence in Metasploit, right? Well, threat likelihood might be a better way to measure something. Um, even detention, people talking about things a lot. So count the number of references in, in NVD or a CVE entry. And if it has more than 10, the thing needs to be talked about by humans, you know, put a name on it. Um, we talk about naming things neutrally just to have a code word on it, like the, like the three words covering the planet. Um, so no, names you recognize, but they don't have any extra special meaning, arbitrary albatross is, you know, kind of in that department. Um, or we might want to be not neutral. Uh, we might want to uh, uh, actually apply some meaning uh, based on one of those dimensions. So, you know, do we encode that uh, severity threat or attention or, or similarity uh, means something? So if it's angry bear or angry lion or angry tiger, the fact that it's angry is, uh, you know, a high CVSS score, for instance, something like that. Um, we have language issues, actual, you know, which language are we talking about? Um, we picked English, of course, because that's what we speak, and it's the de facto sort of technical language. It just happens to be that way. Um, there's nothing stopping someone from using a different set of word lists, right? Absolutely not. As long as you get the grammar right. Um, we thought we're going to, one of our, one of our we, we think we all, I think we only do adjective noun. Right. But we talked about noun, noun, or multiple nouns, like the my, my three words, uh, or the three, whatever it's called, three words. Whatever the three words website talks about. Um, if you do pick a different language, you have to get your grammar right. So we have, you know, there's red dog and the French say it, dog red, dog that is red, I guess, basically. Um, I'm sure there are many more language combinations you have to deal with if you want to want to change your uh, uh, change your, your native language. Scale, we need enough names to cover the number of vulnerabilities there are in the world, future, universe, 100,000 currently. I don't know how many in the future. Um, Lee's these slides are going to cover the part where there are enough uh, names, we probably think, right? Many people have said that and been wrong. Um, uh, sorry. Um, some of the uh, word expert sort of uh, terms here, 
if you want to have meaning and, and, and less neutrality but more pulling out meanings, you can talk about sort of common things that are commonly well known, uh, things that evoke some meaning or are a little bit taboo or not taboo if you want to kind of create a, a feeling in someone. Um, rhyming and alliteration, arbitrary albatross, and my stupid title has like triple alliteration in it. Um, creative swear words, right? I take a normal sounding thing and add, you know, F in front of it. Now it's something you kind of notice and remember. Um, opposite words, similar words, and again, part of, part of what, if you're gonna try to have non-neutrality here, what emotions do you wanna pull out uh, and invoke, uh, evoke? You could do similarity, so what if all of the shell shock vulnerabilities had the same, you know, the same partial word, like a last name? Uh, so, you know, Mannion 1, Mannion 2, Mannion 3. Um, that requires you to know similarity, which may be a human problem. It might be a machine handleable problem, but you can't just have a random empty word list. You have to have uh, some way to say these are all shell shocks or these are all specter uh, variants. Uh, conversely, if you don't want to imply that there's similarity, if, I, if I'm trying to be neutral and I have the word um, dog show up in two vulnerabilities, I have to be clear that that does not mean that they're related in any way. And I don't, words do get reused, right? Yes. But not in the same combination. Is the idea okay um, so you know given all these things we don't have a we don't have a solid solution we've chosen as the right thing yet but we've explored a lot of this space and Lee's done all of the all of the work for the most part um, what does a solution look like we need words we need enough words to cover all the vulnerabilities and all the combinations we would need um, we need to turn those words we need to turn the input you know the catalog number the CVE number into into the words and we need something to do that uh, an algorithm or a method to do that um, and, you know, Lee does work for me, but I know she knows math, and she is a co-author on, on a math book, so I thought, gee, I'll ask Lee to uh, look into this. And um, she did, so I'm going to hand it over to you, and that's the forward button. Uh, hi. Um, this has been one of the most entertaining projects I've ever worked on. <laughs> Seriously. So I started with the problem of, well, let's forget the math for a moment. I need some words. I gotta have some words in order to name things. So I started by scraping the Wiktionary because that has all the words. <laughs> Excuse me, all the words. <laughs> I got a lot of words doing this. I got over half a million adjectives. I got over a million nouns. Right, and that's enough, that's enough vulnerabilities. Yes, I think, I think I, I, if we have more than that, well, at that point, I really don't care anymore. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not around to deal with that problem. That's somebody else's problem, um, not yeah. mine. You know, here's the generation. problem with using the Wiktionary. It's all the words. Like I said, all the words. Microsoft Word likes to declare like half of these misspellings. Yeah, I know what like two of those mean, <laughs> maybe three. So yeah, it's like, four, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I got nothing for that one. I don't know what it is. It's in the Wiktionary, so you can look it up, but I got nothing as to whether it's a good word, it's a bad word. I'm not even sure how to pronounce the thing. So I said, okay, let's see what other words I can find out there. So I went to WordLess 2. And WordLess 2, I said, let's look at some natural language processing, because these people set up corpuses where they tag what all the words are. And luckily, I found a website that actually had a corpus I could download, so a lot of people want you to pay for it. And I'm pretty sure I had no money for this project. No. <laughs> you might have, a little bit. So I created two word lists of singular adjectives and nouns. Uh, went down quite a bit on how many words I got. Uh, 7,500 adjectives and 30,000 nouns, and we're still a pretty good number of vulnerabilities to tag. We don't have that many, right? Not yet. Not yet, okay, good. In testing, I ran into some interesting combinations, though. <laughs> Would you like to name a vulnerability gelatinous whitehead? And that's the nice one. <laughs> you told me I had to take the nasty one out. Yeah, that's our second choice. <clears throat> so it was suggested to me by some uh, statisticians, you know, maybe you should filter out all words in the Urban Dictionary. That might make things better. But I said, hey, I'm having fun with this. Let's go find another word list. So this time... I went to a list of common nouns and adjectives. I just searched Google and said, give me a list of common nouns, give me a list of common adjectives. And this time, 
I got quite a few less again, and we're down to six million vulnerabilities, and we're not there yet. No, no? okay. I think so, at least not till Microsoft releases a new operating system. I I don't know what. <laughs> I'm sorry, I came up through XP I and mean, ME days. I've it was yeah. great fun. On the plus side, nothing too offensive. So no more gelatinous whitehead. Darn. I mean, I mean so no more gelatinous whitehead. <laughs> You said it enough times now. They get, okay. I get the point. Yeah. He didn't like the previous one and all. And I'm like, hey, I can do worse than that. <laughs> Just watch me. So you get lovely names like apologetic alligator, corrupt bird bath, tickled allegro. These are not bad. Uh, the problem is, is like corrupt <laughs> kind of is a negative connotation to the word. And I'm like, OK, so negative is not a good thing. Let's find happy words. And I tell you, I was having fun with this. I really had a lot of fun with this. So I found a paper that looks at the emotional content of words. And they had a word list. And I even give you the URL so you can get the lovely word list and download it for yourselves. And in there is a column of the emotional impact of a word. And so it rates from low, as in bad words, to higher values, which are happier words. So using this, I made that list using a truly scientific method. <laughs> hey, I'm a mathematician, not a scientist. I had fun with this. So I basically said, anything above here looks like a happy word, so we'll go there. That's a nice cutoff point. Right, so you had, you had, you had them ranked in, like, they're ranked from happy to yes. sad? To, to well. Negative, positive to negative kind of Positive to negative is a better And way. then you. Drew a line somewhere. I drew a line okay. somewhere and said, everything above here is more or less positive. Right. I did not read the paper to figure out what they said was positive. I said, I'm having fun with this. Right. Hey, you want the vulnerability yummy nudity? Because <laughs> <laughs> according to this, <laughs> yummy's a happy word. Nudity's a happy word. <laughs> I just can't wait for someone to talk about the yummy nudity vulnerability in Congress. <laughs> that will totally make my career worthwhile. <laughs> So I had some constraints on my function. Because this is where the math gets in. There's going to be math formulas. There will be no integration. There's going to be no questions to the crowd to ask you to integrate anything. So please stop flashing back to your horrible calculus teacher. <laughs> the function must be surjective and injective. That, must mean, that means everything is mappable to something else and, you can go. and backwards. So that if I give you the phrase yummy nudity, you can figure out where the CVE that came from. Or apologetic alligator or our arbitrary albatross. You must be able to figure it out the other way around. And it must only map to one thing each way. And uh, randomness is out, guys. Sorry, no randomness. Because you have to be able to take the function and your CVE, if you are a CNA, and give me the nice little phrase, you don't need to come to me and hopefully I pull something out of a hat. Or out of my computer, whatever it does. And I don't want to tie it to a specific set of words. So I had four sets of words up there. I'm not saying any of them is the perfect set of words, but I did tell you that each one of them has their own little bits of problems. So the first method, I said, this is fairly easy. I will use modulus. Because I have in adjectives and M nouns, and I'm a mathematician, so I like to write M and N instead of adjectives and nouns. We're a lazy bunch. The adjective will be the number I'm trying to map, modulus N, and the noun will be the number I'm trying to map, modulus M. Well, this fails for collisions. It's very easy to run into collisions. As a simple example shows, now everyone's splashing back to calculus again. I'm going to run into collisions using just plain modulus. So OK, method one is out. Let's go to method. Everyone dead with method one? Good. Method two is where the actual kind of math comes into play. <laughs> it's based on number theory. And I want to solve this equation right here to get a unique A and B that I can map to an adjective and a noun. The problem is this equation is only solvable by a unique A and B pair if M and N are relatively prime. 
That means they share no common divisors. Like four and nine, they each have divisors, but they're not in common with each other, except for one, and one doesn't count in number theory. So if I fiddled with my word list, I might be able to get there, except this is actually a hard problem. The hard problem is starting with two integers, m and n, how much fiddling can you do within a reasonable amount to get two relatively prime numbers? Um, it's on my list of things to solve. I have no solution yet. And by the way, I'm not a number theorist, so that might take me a while. So method two is out because I want unique solutions. So then, here's a nice little math equation here. Everyone running screaming yet? No? Okay, good. No. And the function should have an inverse. So I did what mathematicians do and stared at walls. You see the movies where the mathematicians stand in front of a whiteboard or a chalkboard or even a window and they stand there and they write equations like that? That isn't what mathematicians do. <laughs> that is not even close what mathematicians do. Mathematicians stare at walls a lot. And then we might write something down. And then we stare at that. And then we ball it up and throw it across the room. And then we go back to staring at walls. You can't exactly make a really cool movie out of doing that. So I went to the back to my wall and I stared at it for a while. And I literally stared at the wall for a while thinking about this problem. And then it hit me, the Hilbert curve. The Hilbert curve is a space filling curve. It's a nice pretty picture of it. And it wraps around itself and it gets tighter and tighter each iteration you do so that it's trying to fill up that box without crossing itself. And since it doesn't cross itself, then there's no collusion that's gonna happen. Yay for no crossing. You may have seen it in this XKCD. And if you buy my book, you'll see how to make this XKCD cartoon out of my book. But I also talk about why it's actually not a great visualization in my book. So there I go selling my book again. <laughs> hey, it's an awesome book. <laughs> I know, I wrote it. <laughs> so it gives me two functions, though. If I know the length of the curve, then I know the point x, y that it ends up in. And conversely, if I know x and y, then I know the length of the curve. So now I can take my integer and map it to two integers, and happy things happen. Except, yeah, I'm done, yay. Yeah, except I'm not, because <laughs> there's constraints with the Hilbert curve. There's always constraints. That's math, there's always a constraint. This only works up to curves up to length m squared minus 1, where m is my number of nouns. nouns right. right. I confused the heck out of them because I kept calling n's adjectives and m nouns. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> we, edit, we reviewed carefully. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it also requires that n equals m for n's number of adjectives. So I just kind of cheated and used some modulus and hoped it worked out for now. Because I'm not declaring this is the be all and end all and great solution. I'm declaring this is a great start. Um, and if I use two sets of nouns, if I'm calling it the alligator albatross vulnerability, then this works absolutely fine. And so now I have words, I have methods, and then you see the E people just screwed things up totally. I mean, I shouldn't put it that way. I think there are That's any That's not here. polite. Are there anyone in well, here? For, no, good, okay. Not really. Okay, so the CVE people totally screwed me up. I said, okay, I'll just take the CVE, YYY dash N, 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 and last time I looked at CVEs, they only went up to like 10,000 or so. Four and years. Yeah. yeah, four or five, and I'm good, and everything works out. And then I started looking at CVEs. And I may have said some profanity, I'm sorry. Good thing my office has a door on it. Because you guys make that go up to infinity, especially the way you assign thing to CNA. So life sucks for me now, because that number is probably going to be bigger than, well, it's not going to be bigger than the Wiktionary. Maybe. It could be, though. It could be. It's infinity, I think. Right? Did I mention you guys messed this up for me? I had a great thing going, and then life. Or maybe 64-bit. Reality went to it. I don't know how big numbers are these days. So I have options. 
I can do modulus again and take the CVE modulus, the number of potential word combinations, which is actually what I did for examples. But I can also run into collisions with that, so that's not actually a great solution. I can take the top CVE and subtract off the minimum CVE so that I'm starting at zero for counting. The problem with that is that the first one was 1999 dash 0001 or four zeros? Three, Three zero? zeros and a one, yeah. Yeah, that's a small number. I know I'm saying it's a small number, but compared to these guys with, you know, six or seven afterwards, it's not enough to actually really affect things. So there I went that one. So now I'm like, I shall use math. By the power of math, I shall solve this. And everyone's looking at me just leave, believing me. Well, I'm used to that. <laughs> There's this thing called the Cantor pairing and unpairing function. And the Cantor pairing function, what it does is it takes two numbers and creates a unique third out of it. And you can go backwards from it. You can take the unique third and create the unique pair that created that. The problem with doing that is we're gonna end up with some vulnerabilities with two words, some vulnerabilities uh -huh. with three words. Totally depends on the actual CVE number. I hadn't solved this one yet. I'm still working on a solution. Um, so now we have some examples. Would you like to? Uh, sure, I'll control the clicker. Yeah, so you I, don't mind. I yeah. don't know all these guys. <laughs> no, no, so um, yeah, a little game again. These might be easier than the one before, and again, your prize is a lovely cert sticker. These are also illegal, so don't tell anyone that I gave them to you. I didn't ask first, I just had them made. Because <laughs> I knew what the answer was gonna be. It was gonna be a six month drawn out no or non-answer, so I've learned. Just It's just a sticker. Uh, and it is actually, anyway, yeah. Uh, so a little, little, little PowerPoint game. Who knows which one this is? Close, ghost-like, uh, synonym for ghost. I'm sure there's a technical difference. Spectre, Spectre. It is Spectre, here you go. Oh. Uh -huh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, did anyone know this, this CVE? It was that one off the top of their head? Did anyone remember that CVE? Yes, no, okay. Because um, there's more than one right variant of Spectre. Does anyone know which variant the CVE or that ghost means or anything yet? Can you, can you, so yeah, this is B2, but again, no, no, all this stuff is just, you don't create a table for yourself somewhere, it's just lost, right? Um, so the common word list calls it deputy consideration. Happy words list is genetic paradise. <laughs> We've got starched amplify. And uh, We're not even hold on, I'm going to try. We're not even going to try that one. <laughs> Abdominal vesicle aerophysics. Congratulations. Vesicle. Yeah, I should get a. I get myself a sticker for that. All right. Uh, now, as an experiment, we talked about sort of you know neutral names versus a name that has some meaning. Uh, as an experiment, we're going to try it with severity. So, um, and stop me if I get this one wrong. So we've got we've, take, we've taken the CVE, the the number integer part of CVE, turned it into adjective noun. Right? Uh, what I did is I took the 4.2. Well, no, no, sorry. First, before we added the, the severity, right. we're just taking the CVE, the CVE to integer get string to get to that. To get genetic paradise. So we're adding an entire separate number as an input. A third, right. second, whatever. Third, you whatever. Think really, so I, right. I took the CVS score, multiplied it by 10 to get me a nice integer, and then just mapped that to the 47th adjective in my list. Right. So basically, uh, as CVSS scores go, you don't actually get all 100 anyway, but anytime you see a 4.7, you get the word uh, abundant in the happy words and accustomed in the NLP list. So basically, if you had, if you had a 4.7 for a different vol, you would get abundant, you know, abdomo, visceral, whatever. Um, but the point is you could encode uh, meaning here if you wanted to add a word to it. Um, CVSS was easy for, an, for the experiment here, but again, we would try to pick something else uh, Again, sort of most talked about, popular, um, perhaps highest, higher threat rating of some kind. Um, but again, you don't, get, you don't just get that for free. You've got to have that data ahead of time also. Um, so let's see what our next one is here. Anybody want to guess what this one is? Heartbleed, he said it first. Good guess. This was, this was going to be the first one. It's super easy. There you go. Thanks. Uh, who, knows, who knows the CVE? Anybody want to guess the CVE? Get want to guess the year? Year, come on, we can get the year. 
Someone knows the year. 2014. 0160, which I, I had memorized for like a month and then I forgot until I looked it up again. Yeah, I do recognize that. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. So, right. Professionals and nerds can remember the phone number and the, the code number, but, um, right. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Heartbleed. Drawbridge Clam. Economic Freedom. <laughs> Submembraneous Alp. And another long one, acclim acclimate, acclimatizable adolescency. I think we're going to have to have a syllable limit somewhere, too, or something. I these don't do have not, a syllable limit. Some of these no. do not roll off the tongue, right? <laughs> that might be, the, fluent, that might be the, flu the fluency property, perhaps, or, you know, the more common things people can say more easily. And we're already being jerks about doing this in English, so, you know, when you start giving out really hard multi-syllable words with L's and things, it's, it gets silly, so... Um, we should be polite to, to others. Uh, okay, we have at least, we've got at least one more here. Anybody want to guess this one? Dirty cow. Dirty cow, very good. You get a sticker. That one's pretty self-explanatory, but yeah. There you go. Uh, oh, who wants to guess the CVE ID? Anybody? Why can you humans not remember the CVE IDs for these things? It's so easy. It's so easy. Uh, yeah, whatever. 16. Oh, copy on right. That's why. Um, dirty cow. All right, let's see what we came up with. So, division craw, heady convenience, subtle aneurysmal. <laughs> aneurysmal? Boy. Uh, I can throw carpus after comer. Wiktionary has got to be out. I mean, <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're crossing that one out. Um, Why do you think I chose those? Oh, I chose them at random, and that's a, kind of was a great illustration. No, no. I mean, this is this is we got. You know, basically, we, we reduce this down to we have four word lists we're still playing with. Yeah. And yes, at the moment, lists. one sort of preferred way to convert convert things over. Um, but again, not you know, not really a finished thing yet. Um, I think we have another one here. So. Just as a counterexample, here's uh, something with no branding. That black dot means there's no branding. Um, but this was a good one. This was a doozy back in the day because uh, it was remote own IIS. It might still be if anyone's running Windows 2000. Anyway, um, and this comes out comes out for Flax Bugle, Bugle Bugle, manageable fidelity, tonometric aggregate. And adventuresome, oh, for which name? <laughs> Acroesthesia. Acroesthesia. Do you know what that means? It's going to get you a sticker if you can answer it correctly. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so yeah, again, this Lee's run the CVE corpus through all of the all four uh, all four word lists. lists. And um, the kind of the questions we have to pose, you know, post this presentation, and once we either, you know, I guess well, these slides will be posted, I think. Um, we'll post them if they aren't posted here, but um, uh, does anybody care? Is this useful? Right? There is, uh, we have some internal debate about, you know, what problem are you trying to solve, which I'll basically com summarize to be, um, uh, Sometimes humans need to talk about the things, and they're just not going to use the CVE number. And yet, we need the CVE number or the equivalent. We have to have that for informational purposes. Um, that's not something people can go talk about. The press can't write about it. Congress can't ask questions about it. Uh, Non-professional nerds can't have that conversation. Um, I don't think we care about sort of preventing. There's there's the there's the branding element and the hype element, right? So um, um, I'm trying to forget. If I remember the one, there have been a couple of branded ones that were sort of flops and were panned as being, uh, you know, well, well overhyped for their relative severity. Uh, the Bash one. Um, Shell Shock? Shell Shock. Yeah. Um, I was in my Sisadin days at that time, and oh, I Shell looked Shock. at Shell Shock and went, I don't care. Because I realized it had get root using it. You had to have root, so. But it had a cool name. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't think we're trying to put 
you know, researchers out of business in terms of their, their marketing and their PR and, and, and gaining attention for vulnerabilities. Um, maybe if such a system were common in every day and, you know, the CV entry just had the words in it, maybe that would deter uh, brand name creation. I don't know that it would, and I don't know that we particularly care. Um, it might be more for the other, you know, you know, whatever, 20,000 a year minus the 25 a year that get a brand name. You know, what, how do you talk about those? Um, might be the might be the use case, uh, and again, we're not you know we're not done with the idea that maybe you only need names for the top, whatever ten percent severity threat popular ones. You may not need names for absolutely everything. Although I guess it's relatively trivial to just name them it's all. It's relatively trivial just to name them all. Okay. And, but I think if you add the CVSS or whatever, excuse me, not CVSS. Yeah, I yeah. apologize, but whatever threat type of score with it, that would actually really. Is the, uh, so the happy words have scores with them, and they map to low numbers, means they're emotionally bad, to higher numbers like yummy, which is an emotionally happy word. Okay. So it's very easy to map the whatever score we use and figure out what are the adjectives that are like, this is horrible to yummy. Okay, I won't use something as an example anymore, but horrible to nice. So uh, it's fairly easy to do something like that. Yeah. Which would also give an idea to people as opposed to going to look up the CVSS score and not understanding it, being able to go, oh, this is horrible happy bugle, excuse me, horrible flax bugle, and so therefore that's a scarier thing than just CV, whatever, oh, that CVE, whatever the heck the number was that I still don't remember. Um, that's, there is, there's oh. actually one other problem with the word list. I did not filter out computer terms. So right. when you see the word list and things mapped, there will probably be something called happy computer vulnerability, <laughs> happy firmware vulnerability. I think that's probably something you should cons we should consider removing. I'm going to see what terminal does in a full. doesn't go there. Why not? Uh... One second while I mess with my display. That's the slides, so we'll pause for questions. I'm gonna grab a terminal and, and I can grab some CVEs if anyone's got a favorite and we can play a couple more games as to kind of what comes out there. So, Lee, you handle questions, please? Excellent, thank you. They're gonna be math questions so, anyway from him, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, not, not anymore. Okay. <laughs> um, so have you considered uh, limerizing the terms since it seemed like some of the more complex words were um, derivative of a more common base word. So limerizing and then using the um, root uh, as the term instead of using the uh, more complex form. But yeah, that's horrible. I know uh, I had not considered that, and that's a great idea. Sorry, uh, what did he mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I was not paying attention. I also, uh, yeah, please. Uh, uh, so, like, uh, acroathesia is a derivative of, say, we'll pretend this because I'm not a linguist either, a uh, derivative of acrobatics. And so we'd use acrobatics, oh, not the words right, derived right. from it. Okay. And that was a horrible example, but. Did you? Yeah. Uh, well, just, I'll just walk around. Okay. Uh, I was just going to ask uh, how you dealt with like words or if like words uh, would be frequent in the database. So, you know plurals um, or, you know, other? Well, I did restrict myself to singular nouns. Okay. So that was one thing I definitely restricted myself, and singular adjectives. Uh, I didn't want to run into computer and computers and going, oh, well, yeah, pick one. Um, that is one thing I did right. <laughs> Other than that, uh, it's actually a good question. Is well, you should probably, we should probably do some Levenstein distance and remove the ones that are just really too close to each other. Uh, any other questions as he goes looking through things? <laughs> oh, nothing there. Ah. Can we get you guys to sponsor uh, PowerPoint karaoke next time and like oh, random yeah. name, <laughs> explain the CVE in terms? No, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, our, our boss, his boss, actually wanted us to do t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we yeah, the, we were going to do more of the PowerPoint karaoke, basically, or the, or the you know, play the, yeah. play the uh, named vulnerability games. Um, it works. It's a great PowerPoint game. I mean, it just lends itself perfectly. Um, yeah. 
Is PowerPoint karaoke an actual thing that happens at B sides? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. All right. And is it a separate competition, or do you just someone just observes all all week and no, or both days? And you, you get a set of slides. You get a set of slides that from someone else, and else, and you have to give someone else's slides without like five minutes prep, maybe. Okay. Something like that. Um, another thing is if you could build this into a badge, I'm sure the DevCon people would love you. Oh, and just spit spit stuff like, out, or put in the CVE number on the badge, and it, like nice. make it cool. Badge. Yeah. <laughs> But I mentioned this was like the most fun project ever. I mean, I'm sitting in my office going, I named a vulnerability erotic nakedness. This is an awesome job. I love this job. So I'm actually. And now I mean, he's going you know, to go up for erotic nakedness. Uh, I could. I wasn't. Uh, I, was, I was doing it the other way. Oh, I, I like that. The pivotal penguin. Fishnet chauvinist. That might be it. <laughs> the, the, the one we had as a, as a horrible example we took out. Um, if you looked at it on paper or read, or read it very slowly, it was fine. But if you kind of read it, the, the two of the constants went, went together in a way that it was a little bit of a, we didn't want to put it in a, in a public presentation, basically. But um, so there's, there's a bunch of weird things that could still sneak up that, that I don't actually know how to exclude all of the possible weird combinations. And that'll be language dependent, too. So Yeah, right? well, I mean, one way to do it here is, like I said, re remove everything in the Urban Dictionary. And I actually did download the Urban Dictionary. and and uh, scrape it so I can do that, but um, I haven't done it yet because I was having too much fun. <laughs> did you try out MSLA 067? Uh, no, what's, you know what the CV is? I don't, think I, have the, I don't think I have it the other way, sorry. So the fun thing would be okay, the, the name uh, meaning something in a different country. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and you bring it up, you know, you know fairy tale cauliflower could mean something uh, different in a, in a different country. And it could be a, uh, oh, that's not what I really want to say. So I thought that'd be interesting. Let's just say it could be something that would be in their urban dictionary. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Enterprising donation. Yeah, I'd say that sure. was one of my favorites. Right. I asked the Vol team, I'm like, give me your favorite CVEs. And uh, one of them came out with that because apparently it's the gift I think that, that keeps was, giving. Yeah, that was one of the ones we, yeah, had to use as an example. And yeah. I was like, oh, enterprising donation. I'm like, it fits. <laughs> So any other questions? And also opinions. I mean, Please, this, this, opinions. Is a, this is a relatively you know, low cost to, to date experiment for us. And, and we're going to play it a little bit further, I think. I, the only thing it cost was my time. Well, uh, relatively low cost, right. But uh, usefulness of something like this. I mean, it, it's fun, and we're going to keep playing with it anyway. But you know, imagine a world where, let me just imagine, um, you know, there is a CVE in a timely way for every single public disclosure. And along with the CVE is a you know, two-word or three-word combo. It's just there all the time. And it just, everyone all wakes up one morning and accepts that that's, that exists. Is that better, worse, the same, not that meaningful? I, for my opinion, I like it and, one, and I don't know how to back. Yeah, sure. One of the things I find really interesting is this may normalize the idea of giving vulnerabilities names. So right now, if a vulnerability has a name, it is implicit it is more important. No matter what the name is. Yeah, right? no matter what the name is. And so um, if you gave them all names that are kind of in the same region of namespace, you know, when people see a vulnerability with a name, they wouldn't automatically think this is one that I have to spend budget to um, act on. You know, and if it has the more threatening name because it was named manually, um, maybe that brings it a little more in the, in the right. um, thought presence. But... Um, it starts being accepted that vulnerabilities just have names, and some right. of them feel very random, and some of them are purposefully more intentional. Yeah, and again, there's the, the idea that we might only want to name the important, quote unquote, important ones if that's possible to agree on, which is difficult in itself. But then, then we could leave the idea that the name does mean something, but like the storms, there'd be some slightly more objective measure that the ones with names, the implication is true, right? They are more important for some reason. So. Yeah, a couple back here, sorry. Yeah, the only analogy I can think of is like hurricanes. You know, we have a naming yeah. system for that. Thankfully, we don't have as many hurricanes as CVE numbers, but I think that's, you know, it makes definitely makes it easier to, you know, cross date, talk about as compared to a random set of numbers. Yeah, I, I mean, I imagine it within NOAA somewhere they've got serial numbers or something that tracks the storms, you know, before they get a name, I, I would guess. The computer's got one, the database has something, right? Sorry, Tom and... So um, I think it's problematic to get rid of the year 
because at all. Yeah, yeah, I think the year needs to stay and like I would like a year and a name because that's very valid and that's very valuable information when you're talking about stuff that doesn't get patched for very long or just knowing <laughs> like we we're discussing the time frame of when something was actually shipped. Yeah. Okay. Um or at least coordination began like it did with Spectre and Meltdown. Yes. Um I think there is value in this just for the fact that, you know, people can say these words. So if you are, you know, if you are on a blue team or doing, you know, like doing other remediation or assessment and you find stuff, this is easier. It's easier to talk about these, I think. Well, not all of them, obviously. The Wiktionary is not going to be something that people can just say yeah. and con drop in conversation. <laughs> but I mean, that that's valuable for any number of things from just like, like conversations over a phone or teleconference or just yelling down the hallway what it is you found on something. Um, I think this, so that's that's all valuable for this. I do like the idea of naming everything and not and having like a repeatable process so that people can find stuff and name it as long as they have a CVE. And that's one issue where we know that in some cases coordination takes place and people are reserving the CVEs or holding or not getting the CVEs until they're ready to lift embargo, which means that this becomes moot, sadly, which is really a, just more like people yeah. should practice better getting CVE practices. So one thing we have considered is naming a year. Oh, yes. So you'd have so a family name, basically. Family name for the year. And I'm personally iron, fond of the year of the quokka. So, you know, I think quokkas right. are cute. Chinese New Year style. No, that's exactly what I was going to say. Na give a name for the year. Um, I think that's important. Um, but I think two names is, is maybe a little bit too much. But if because one name is, is probably more memorable. There's like a lot of the storms that you have, it has maybe like one name, Hurricane Katrina, yeah. Hurricane da da da. It just has yeah. one name. Um, and then, you know, you, the name is tied to a year. So the year has a name and then you have your whole dictionary uh, for to use for that year. And then you can repeat that for next year because then you'll have two different names. I, lo I love the animal ones. Like he I did arbitrary albatross. Things. So like red dog and unstoppable dolphin are we should have an animal. I think it should be no. bucket. Elixir bucket. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I do kind of like having the some be more important. Like like Spectre Meltdown has a name, yeah. right? It's easy to talk about. But that's, it that tells me. I'm glad it has a name because it is important. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So it's but it's useful. So so even if they're all named, and maybe it would just fall out naturally. But like you know the dog we like. The dolphin volume that becomes super popular. Everybody needs to talk about it. It's you're you're fixing it in lots of different places. People are worried about it, so dolphin becomes an important name that you use. But maybe you want to name it something that's rel you know related to what that volume is to uh, you know like the cow volume, right? Yeah. It's named cow because it has the cow. Yeah, right. It's right. The cow volume. Um, I don't know. I just I can see both ways on yeah. all these. Well, that's actually an NLP problem we've kicked around, but as a, I'm not an NLP expert, but I know some. So You've got some around. We're going to be... We have a couple around that we can this. actually... One of them helped us with this. Fried burrito. Easy. Emergency that, bus. That word should probably be stricken from the list. Which one? Emergency? Emergency. Yeah. But right, we, need, we need, you know, broken <laughs> computer shouldn't be one of the ones, right? Yeah. Like, like, that, yeah. Ser serious exploit should not be one of them, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's part of the reason I went to the happy words, because you don't really want to put the, the emergency. Although we now have the fried oh, burrito in instead, so... Sounds good, too. I'm hungry. <laughs> Any other questions? Call it Jimmy Chonga, I think. Overlap, like you get yeah. sycophantic aglow and sycophantic aglint, but they're only one off. Yeah, they, they can overlap. So, uh, that is the reason, the, uh, the thing, the Hilbert map. Around. And that's just my current solution. Like I said, there's another solution that uses uh, the uh, Cantor pairing and the pairing solution. Sorry, th that's because of the, your mod modulus in the adjectives? Uh, no, actually, oh. that is because of the way the Hilbert curve works. Okay. And the way it wraps around. Okay. Just please ask again in the mic. Sorry, I'm not sure yeah. we've been good about the question. So, is there an issue with modern day CVEs after the you know CNA program and the new numbering scheme? Is there an issue where a like basically a CNA because all their stuff is going to start with a certain set of number? Are they going to get? Oh yeah. Like are they going to get like the same three words for all the vulnerabilities they do that year? Uh, 
And then if they get one they don't like, then the CNA is going to complain about the program. I see. I don't, uh, I don't think, think it's going to so. be basically the same three words, but it's going to be words in the same sort of neighborhood. Um, but it also depends on, you know, how I actually solve that problem. <laughs> the fact that, you know, they have a CNA with how many zeros is that? Okay, that one. <laughs> so these are, these are DWF space, right, probably, because they're in the one million. I'm just guessing there. I think those are the DWF ones. And I see, you know, stable repeats and unintentional repeats. But I, I think... I think within a block, you could still get that first adjective to change. Yeah. And again, we can, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's. But I like calling DWF vulnerability stable. Stable freedom. Stable freedom has a, I feel good about stable freedom. Yeah. What's a, you want to know what a Garaco, Garaco is? Here we go. My guess is the dictionary will not know. Nope. Yeah, I, I don't know. It was found in the... NLP know. had it, so... Yeah, NLP. Right. It's probably in Wiktionary. We can go look at it. So, yeah. Um, I think our, we're at time, so um, thank you for your input and your questions. Um, if anyone wants a search sticker, just stop up and grab one. I wanted to make a game out of it, but not everybody got one, so it's one of those games where you just get one by, wait, by sitting through the whole talk. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Lee. Thanks, Gabe. Thank you, B-Sides.